All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to week two of our storytelling class. Um, so for those of you who are new, and uh, I guess, Jess, Patricia, you guys were here last week, but uh, I, Scott, I don't think you were here last week. So what we do is we go kind of around the room and we just kind of go over a uh, little bit of our focus points for what we want to do with our career. And uh, we're going to talk real quick about that. And then we're going to focus a little bit on um, you this week. Anything you have questions about your story, and then uh, we'll work a little bit on, you know, a back to your brand and what you're looking to do, uh, you know, kind of building that brand name. So, Scott, can you uh, unmute? Just tell me a little bit about uh, yourself real fast and what you're hoping to get out of L.A. Film School. Are you there? Can you hear me? No. Okay. All right. We're going to go over to Jess. Jess, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, all right. Okay. So uh, how was your week? What uh, we talked a lot about uh, for you and your sister last week about kind of building brand. What uh, any, any takeaway thoughts, anything more that you have from uh, what we talked about last week and kind of building your brand? Yeah, I got to thinking about it a little more and I'm just going to go based off a little more on that women empowerment side. And even break it down a little bit more with being a plus size woman in, you know, just like in that realm of also being a woman empowerment, just break it down a little more. Um, we also are thinking of starting a podcast together in regards to that as well. I think that's great. I think the more, you know, I talked about, uh, you know, kind of the sniper approach versus the Gatling gun kind of uh, approach when it comes to doing social media and branding and um, you know, a lot of times people just kind of come out and they just do this wide swath like a fire hose. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think the more hyper focused that you can get it, your audience may be slightly smaller, but mm -hmm. I would really, I'd rather have a small devout audience than a large audience of, you know, people that don't really even care. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and that's like, you know, to me, social media has proven that time and time again, because you'll see all these, like, like when you used to really be able to buy Facebook followers, I mean, you can see these people, they'll have 250,000 followers on Facebook mm -hmm. and then they'll do a post and they'll get like three likes. Yeah. You know, because these people aren't real, you know, they don't really exist. So that works as a number, but it doesn't work as a human being that you can actually engage with. Gotcha. And that stinks because if you're selling product, you know, if you're looking to sell a, a, a book or a movie or a t-shirt or your podcast or whatever it is, right. you know, you, those followers are everything. You got to have, even if it's 10,000 followers and it's a small audience, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather have them devout, you know, I'd right. really, I'd rather have them be like rabid followers of, of, you know, my, my particular brand. So I think right. it's a really smart idea. So for those of you who are just kind of popping in, we were talking a lot last week about building your own your own brand. I know this is a storytelling class, but the concepts are the same. And that is that this is the story of you. And for you to go out in the world and tell a story, you've got to know how to tell your own story. And the best way to do that is to focus on how do I market myself? How would I create my own brand? So Jess's brand, and I guess maybe her sister now, is this ability to kind of use plus size women, podcasting opportunities. I mean, you could do anything, right? I mean, you could go off into, you know, clothing lines, you could go off into nonfiction books about, you know, emotional, you know, issues, all kinds of things can kind of all branch off of that. Right. So Patricia, since uh, you and Jess are, are sisters, do you have any more thoughts on that in the, in the brand? Um, no, we just kind of talked about it and we're going to actually start on Monday, next oh, Monday. Great. Good. And we're going to start already trying to get together and start putting more time into that, into building the podcast. All right. So here's what I'm going to recommend for everybody. Okay. Because mm -hmm. here's, here's what I hear a lot in this, in this class and uh, frankly, all of them. Um, it, what you're doing already is a step ahead because you're telling me on Monday, we're going to do it. That's good. That's a good start. Like, go do it and start carving out some time in your day, even if it's just five, 10 minutes to dedicate towards some kind of content creation and, you know, make that be 
it's almost like going to the gym or, you know, eating healthy or getting the right amount of sleep. It's like you're investing in yourself, right? I mean, and I know we don't have time for all that. And, you know, there's a lot of other like masters that we have to go and, you know, do what they need us to do. But um, you've got to pay yourself. And if you're building a brand, if you don't dedicate a set amount of time on a daily basis, like religiously, then you need to get up earlier. You know, you need to make some type of uh, arrangement where you can at least do 10 minutes. But the truth is, and this goes for everybody, I don't care if you're writing a book. I don't care if you're creating a podcast. I don't care if you're going to be a TV news person. You need to build up your brand for that. You uh, you can be doing it even, you know, when you're driving or waiting for the bus or in the shower. You know, I mean, you can be contemplating these ideas and then when it comes time to implement, it doesn't take that long. So, you know, if my first book, it took me probably three and a half to five years to basically kind of carve it out. And I couldn't write for more than maybe an hour or two a day. That's the most amount of time I could get into it, an hour or two a day. I mean, you know, in con you know on contrast to that, somebody like Stephen King writes, you know, eight to 10 hours a day if he's really cooking. So I couldn't get more time because I had, you know, I have kids, I've got a, a job, I had all these other responsibilities. So, but what I would do is in all the other moments of my day that I, that I wasn't like, you know, I'm kind of on autopilot, so to speak, like driving is a good time or, you know, taking a shower or walking a dog, something like that. I'm thinking about it. I'm always thinking about it. So the next time I get to write, I already know what I'm going to do. And so that's the same idea with like any of the branding. So I don't care if you're doing social media posts. I don't care if you know what you're going to do before you sit down to do it. And then that time when you sit down to do it will be much more fruitful and productive. So, all right. So uh, Patricia, Jess, anything else you want to hit on real fast before I go around the room? No, I think that's it. Like pretty much, you know, she said everything to them. All right. Well, I, I encourage you to go at it full full throttle, come up with a plan, know what you're going to talk about. And if you're doing a podcast, you got to video mm -hmm. it and you got to have just start doing five minutes a day, five minutes of content a day until you can start building it up and know that you're going to release, you know, every week at this time. So, OK, okay cool. all right, let's go to Brittany. Brittany, how you doing? Uh, uh, I'm confused on everything I'm doing, to be honest. Oh, okay. okay. For what part? I like, story, know what I want to do and everything, but I get confused and I get undecisive. For like which I start part? For, for writing? writing? Uh, yeah. Like I be needing more deeper meaning, I mean, understanding of, you know, the assignments itself. Okay. So uh, let's let's just do a quick kind of recap of the week when it comes to story. And that's the idea is here. It, it doesn't matter to me what you're writing or creating. So your your uh, your ability to basically create content still comes down to story. And these concepts that I'm teaching you about story, a hook. Uh, the key event, you know, everything that we're working toward, the exciting incident, that's in every good piece of content that we digest, okay? So I don't care if it's a Facebook post or if it's a tweet or it's, you know, even a tweet and just a few characters can have a lot of drama built into it, right? Like every time Donald Trump would do a tweet, there was all this built-in drama, right? So it's like a little mini conflict. It's like a, a little mini story right there in just those few little words. And so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for no matter what kind of story or what kind of you know social media work you're going to do, you're going to be able to have and encapsulate that story concept. And the key to that is going to be the hook. So I, I everybody in this room, I mean, I've looked at all your stuff. Um, I didn't hear any bad ideas. Like everybody in the class, everybody's story is a legitimate idea. Now, I don't know if you're going to go sell it for a million dollars, you know, but the idea is that you are um, still, you, you're starting on good, on good ground, right? Because you've got a good idea. Now, 
the vernacular of what's my hook, what's my inciting incident, those are just kind of details. Feel your story and know where you want it to go, okay? And then we can kind of massage it a little bit. But what I need more than anything, and this is the log line, and this is that hook concept, you got to start off with that hero protagonist. You got to throw something in their face, right? You got to throw something in their way. And that's the first step. So I am so-and-so on my hero's journey when, boom, X happens, right? And that's every story over and over and over again. But what I'm telling you is that story now is more than a book. It's more than a movie. It's, it's everywhere all the time. We're constantly consuming this stuff. TikTok is nothing but short stories, right? So it, it's it's the same formula over and over, but you got to give me a little bit of conflict. Anything else there, Brittany, that you want to hit on? Um, not right now. Um, I can't really think about it, to be honest. Not at this moment. I know okay. I probably am, but not at this moment. All right, look. Writing is painful. It okay? is. It is. It's a painful process. And it's painful for multiple reasons. I, 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 I think I wrote this in some of the feedback, but Ernest Hemingway said, you know, writing is easy. All you have to do is sit down at the keyboard and bleed. So, you know, it, writing is personal. It's, it's raw. You know, the exercise that we did where I had you kind of go back and revisit some of your past demons I mean, that's designed to get you to recognize conflict yeah. obviously in your life, but also rekindle those feelings in some way to make you realize that as, as, as much emotion as you feel about a particular conflict in your life, you need to put that into a character because you have to make them human, right? The best characters are human. The best stories are about people. And, and about the human experience. So look, just write, just write. And, and it may, yeah, everybody's, I first that's what draft, I with. everybody's first draft stinks, everybody's. So no pressure, you know? I mean, there's literally no pressure. You, what we're doing here is we're like literally, I, I'm kind of breaking the rules of writing in some ways. Because the truth is, you never show anybody your first draft. You never show anybody your first draft of writing. It's like your little secret, right? You know, your little secret notebook, or your diary kind of concept, and you keep it in your drawer until it's ready. And when it's ready to show the world, then, hey, let's get it out there. And you only get one shot at that, right? So it better be really, really good. But what we're doing is you're kind of letting me in on your little on your process. I'm, I'm like a little bird on your shoulder that's saying, no, no, let's try this or no, that's perfect. Let's keep that. That's all we're doing here. Um, your first draft, a lot of people call a first draft the vomit draft. Because you're literally just throwing everything up on the page. That's cool. That's good. Get it, get it all out there, you know. And then start picking literally through the pieces of what's relative and relevant and, you know, would have some form of meaning maybe to, to somebody else. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Jess, you asked about an upcoming vlog on TikTok, like a mini vlog. Yeah, that's fine. As long as you hit the time frame. I'm just looking for you to be able to kind of like, I think that one's a minute. This is the one we're talking about. So just give me a minute. I'm looking for a solid minute of basically you know, video one-on-one. So just use a tripod. All right, let's go to Scott. You want to address, did you get your mic fixed? Are you good? Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you, man. Great. All right, real quick, tell me, tell me what you want to do. Get out of LA film school and then let's just go through the last week and see if you had any issues. Um, I plan on doing a bachelor's degree with media communications. And what does that mean, media communications? Um, social media management, entrepreneurship, okay. mix of photography. Okay. I think everybody in this class honestly wants to be social media. That's good. That's good. I'm glad. Um, I, have, I have my own commercial photography business. So I know a lot about photography. That's good. That's good. Um, I've been doing photography since I was in high school. I was in the yearbook. 
I took a photography class as well, an arts art class. So I'm very creative. So now the catch is, man, you got to sell it, right? Yes. So you got your product and that's going to be, you know, photography. So you got to be able to sell that brand. Um, so you, like everybody else in this room, you're going to, and this is the advice I talked about last week. You got to hit every single touch point that you can get somebody it, to be able to look at you. So that's going to be TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and, you know, YouTube and podcasting and anything that you can think of. Now, the hard part is what's my, what's my identity, right? Like what's my, my brand really going to be? Cause the truth is particularly now there's a lot of photographers. So there's got to be something that distinguishes you, something that has to, you have to break the mold. You know, a lot of these guys, I, I have to, you know, a lot of these people on YouTube, I was looking at uh, an After Effects guy on YouTube tonight, tonight. I don't know if anybody does After Effects. After Effects is a beast, okay? It's a really big, you know, program. And it takes years to kind of master After Effects. I mean, you can get like a beginner's skill pretty quickly, but, you know, to really get it down. And this guy teaches After Effects. And he's got 753,000 followers. So, you know, that's his little niche and that's awesome. But, um, you know, and that's what I'd recommend. Like, if you're going to go do photography, you need to be the, the expert. You need to be the guru. People need to look at you and be like, that guy, holy cow, man. He knows, uh, you know, inside and out a camera. He can take any kind of picture in any kind of lighting conditions and any kind of inclement weather. He can get it done. Yes. You got to be that guy. And then you got to tell people you're that guy. And if you're not that guy, fake it till you make it, man. You know, I mean, you. It, it, so. I know my story. I know my story. It's just, it's just organizing it. Finding oh, a word that works well. Yeah, totally. Totally. That's everybody, honestly, in this room, I bet. Everybody in this room suffers from that same kind of like, I, I, I call it's like, I, I call it blank page syndrome. Because even if you're not a writer, it's that same like, fear of where do I begin? How do I get organized? Where do I go from here? You know? So look, you just start, you just start. So start like, start with an outline, come up with, you know, a business model, come up with a name, come up with a domain name that you can get for a website. If you don't have it already, you know, come up with all those little details. Snagit and photography is my business. What is it? Snagit Photography. Okay. So you got the domain name, you got all that? Yes. Multiple domain channel? names. Yes. Good, good. So that's so you're off to a good start. That's where you should be. So get, you know, now I should be able to go to your YouTube channel and I should be like wowed. Not really. <laughs> I know. I don't share very much. And then, you know, what about video? Do you do video? Um, somewhat like I would go to events and videotape what's going on at the event, but I'm not always uploading anything. All right. So I'm going to say this to everybody there. They, look, photography is great. There is still a place in this world for photography. Okay. But if I do a social media post nine times out of 10 with a still image versus a video, I'm going to get more views for the video. Now, you know, length obviously depends there. I mean, how long are they actually watching? I mean, are they really just kind of scrolling through and I just happen to get a hit on it? But I mean, if I if you look at most interactions on a social media site, it's going to be video based. So just consider that as an option and consider it as part of your arsenal, you know? I mean, simultaneous. And plus, I mean, you know, photography is... It, it, it may be harder to get a job in some ways too, you know, whereas if you have photography and videography, it's like, man, I can go shoot stills at your wedding and I can do video at your wedding, you know? So it, you just, it's like, and, you know, most actors or actresses, they call them a triple threat, right? You want to sing, you want to dance, you want to act. You, you got to at least be a double threat with a camera. You got to at least be able to, you know, kind of do stills and video. So and that really goes for everybody because you're all content producers. I mean, everybody in this room is now a content producer. Congratulations. <laughs> Whether you want to be or not. So you just, you know, 
this comes back to, and I've had some, you know, people come through this class that they wanted to do uh, like fashion design and stuff. And that's cool. You're a content creator now. Congratulations. You know, because nobody's going to know to buy your fashion if they don't know that you're out there. So, all right. Anything else, Scott, you want to hit on? Um, yes, I actually have a, sp a specific genre of photography that I like when I take my photos. Okay. It's called HDR photography. All right. So I'm not just taking a single shot of photos. I'm taking multiple photos at the same time. Right. And, and multiple, um, how do you, how do you say, uh, Burst? the lighting okay. yeah, multiple works at the same time. So when I post process, post process photos, it's in a special software. It's not always in Photoshop or Lightroom. Right. When I edit the photos, um, I don't know if you heard of it. It's called um, Aurora HDR and Luminar. Okay. So it's actually by um, Mac Fun it's, or, and Skylum are the two main so, programs that I use. So you should be doing this conversation on YouTube. You, you, I mean, you should literally be walking me through this. I should be able to go to your YouTube channel and I should be able to see 40 different examples of your work and you walking through the software, how I manipulate the images, how I take the images, my equipment. I love equipment videos. I love them. Like, yeah. I mean, what tripod am I going to use? What's the best tripod for me to use if I have to hop on an airplane, you know, three times a week, right? Because I don't want to carry a tripod and, you know, have to check it because Delta's going to lose my tripod, you know? So, those are good videos and i encourage you to go take this and go start making it happen all right i hate being in front of the camera i love being behind the camera guess but what man i got to get out of that bubble <laughs> you got to get out of your comfort zone i mean w welcome to the show you guys are all media communication students that's literally in the title <laughs> you are now communicating via the media and that requires me to probably see your face so you know that's just the new world order man so all right i'm gonna go over to somebody else uh let's go i got two zoom users so who in the up uh, well i can see you your camera's on yes hello hey uh, it wouldn't let me put my name but i'm angela <laughs> what, if, what if her name was what if both of your names were zoom user what are the odds <laughs> <laughs> it's <would be> surreal <laughs> right no hi nice to meet you you too so all right so introduce yourself and then uh let's walk through kind of a little bit of story and brand okay uh, my name is angela um i am in the media communications um course i guess i'm a mom of two um, I love digital media. I want to eventually get my own podcast. Um, I have a YouTube channel that I started a few years ago, but I never followed through with it. Um, but now I've like, I, I learned, I love learning how to edit videos and do digital marketing. And I do that for the company I'm with now. So now I, you know, I'm ready to go back to do that. And I just want to, you know, do the whole entrepreneurship itself. Um, I do eventually want to start a company to where it's like a social media digital company to where I want to learn the ins and outs of how to edit the photos and how to continue creating like the flyers and business card, all the stuff for companies to team up with me. And then I can expand and have my own company under me, you know, to do that. Um, I want to write a book, all that stuff. So that's why I'm here. All right. So look, I and mean, this goes for everybody. I mean, look, you guys are all in the same space. I mean, physically and literally and mentally, you know, I mean, we're all kind of like in the same arena now. You have got to, uh, first off, I don't know if you know Premiere Pro, get great at Premiere Pro. I've heard Pro. of it, Premiere Pro, okay. Um, you know, start working on like learning something like an After Effects. Uh, if you're going to do any photo manipulation, you know, photo, you, you, you have, I'm saying Adobe because you guys have the Adobe suite, so I know you can access it. But um, you have got to, if all these little things that you're talking about, 
you know, they are going to require significant, I mean, significant software knowledge. You got to know how these programs well, work. I used to do um, Photoshop Pro back when MySpace was really big. Um, I used to help people design their own MySpace and guestbook pages. And so I learned how to code and do the, the coding for the, the color and how to do all that. And so that's why I know this is why I'm back because I lost a lot of that, but I want to regain that knowledge um, so I can get that down. And then <clears throat> Lightroom, I already used that um, on my phone, but now that we have that as a software, I'm learning how to use that more. Um, and then you guys taught us how to do the Adobe to create a website. So that's another thing that I learned. So I'm just trying to figure out the main softwares that I need to master in order to, you I, know. I would not wait for LA Film School. And that's the thing, I wanna start now, or I, I'm going to start now. And the fact that you guys provided a tech kit is allowing me to be able to do that um, and sign up with different platforms. I'm basically with LA Film, I just want to like, with the story stuff, the storytelling that you, you're teaching me now, I wanna write a book. The way that you guys structure it, and telling me, okay, well, you need to have a main character who does this. You need to know how to hook. That's just like little stuff like that that I want to learn to perfect what I'm trying to do. So I don't, I'm not necessarily waiting on the school. I just want to, you know, utilize the tools and resources that you guys provide in order to perfect the craft while I'm, you know, starting on my journey. Well, I would encourage everybody in this room to just deep dive into YouTube on whatever the software is. And I mean, yeah. I'm going to stick with Adobe because I know everybody's got it, but there's a myriad of other little softwares out there that, um, you know, do great, that are really good. Um, mm -hmm. But you you should go do some YouTube self tutorials. On I do a lot of that. Yeah, like on a Premiere Pro, um, you know, maybe a little bit of After Effects. After Effects is, like I said, it's a beast. Um, After Effects. Yeah, that's more like, well, after Effects is a little bit of everything, but I mean, there's a little bit of special effects work, but I mean, what you can do with color and, and titles and things like that and After Effects are, are light years ahead of what you would even do in like a Premiere Pro or, or a Canva or something like that. But Oh, nice. Okay. So he, here's, here's what I'm telling you. Um, you are talking about the skill set that everybody in this room is basically going to need outside of the book. I mean, a few of them are maybe talked about writing a book or something and that's fine and we talk about self-publishing like yeah, I think week four I go through a lot of self-publishing and I've self-published a lot um the, it's the same concept I don't care if you're self-publishing I don't care if you're getting out on social media it's a sea of competition it's literally a swamp it's not even a sea it's just a swamp I mean there are thousands of people every day self-publishing books for instance so who are you how are you going to rise up from that noise right so you've right. got to have that brand and that audience built in from the get-go. And that's really hard. It's like a catch-22. It's like, well, if nobody knows who I am, you know, they're, they are going to know who I am when they read my book, but nobody's going to buy your book because they don't know who you are. Right. So, you know, so you've got to build the audience and all these techniques that we've talked about like last week was you got to have, it's a marketing funnel. Okay. It's literally, you got to have all this stuff up here where you're collecting all these people for various purposes. So you got to have a focus point. So what's your book going to be about? Maybe there's an audience from that perspective. Okay. So like Jess and Patricia, you heard them. So last week we were talking about their, their particular audience. So their idea here is they're going to take, you know, uh, plus size women and they're going to focus on them and their particular issues. So that gives them podcasting. Heck, that could give them a, a, a merchandising line. Um, right. That could give them, you know, self-help books or nonfiction. And all of this kind of funnels down. So here's here's our audience. And we want that to come all the way down. And here's our products down here. Right. So I got to build the audience first. Because, I mean, you know, it's great to have a product. But I can't tell you to go. I mean, I can tell you, go write a book. And I can show you how to write a book. Okay, and we can get that book published. There is no no doubt. I'll show you. I'll I'll show you how to design covers. I'll I'll show you how to get you know the the barcodes on the back. We can go through all of that. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody gonna buy it if they don't know who you are. That's true. And so, I've talked to like different people, whether it's coworkers or people that I've worked with in the past, and all this stuff, and kind of shared my story. And even with you, you know, with my writing. I don't know if you remember what I've shared yeah, in my you're, writing. You're a Zoom user, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
so I'm starting to, you know, communicate that and start. And when I do share people, I get positive feedback. So I'm like, okay, maybe I do have something. So, well, yeah. Here's the difference. Doing it. Right. Doing, doing it is the difference. Because like I said to Brittany, I mean, every first draft sucks. It's right. awful. It's awful. Every first draft. I don't care who you are. You could be Stephen King or Steven Spielberg or any of them. Your first draft is not the draft. You are like, okay, let me get this to the publisher. Oh, let me go film this right now. You know, I mean, it's just, it, you know, it's the nature of the beast. So don't put this arbitrary pressure on yourself, but you have nothing if you don't sit down and actually write it. Yeah. So it could, you could literally... I'm going to give you guys an example. My first book, like I said, took about five years. I rewrote it seven times before I got to my first draft. I put a million words into my book before I got to my first working draft of what became the book. And then I had five more drafts after that. So the amount of words that I literally put into this book that nobody ever saw, and thank God, because what the idea was here, it was like this, and it was over here, and it's a little bit of that. And it's like, you know, you're literally like wandering around aimlessly through the woods. And it's the same concept with social media. You know, if you don't have this like clear kind of focus, it's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to do a little of this today. You know, today I'm uh, going to do a video on, you know, knitting. And then mm -hmm. tomorrow I'm going to do one on cars. Yeah, it's like. No, you got to like have that target. So, right. um, but it'll come, it'll come. So, all right, let me, uh, let me get over to somebody else. Shane. Hello, hello. How are you, man? Nice to meet you. Did nice I just meet you? Hey, uh, here's a test. Is anybody asleep? <laughs> no. I make it around the room. Uh, so, all right, Shane, real quick, man, tell me about yourself and what you're hoping to get out of L.A. film school. And uh, let's talk about what you want to do. Uh, so I spent seven years in the Army. I just got out in 2020. I have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, bachelor's degree in social management strategy, and I'm just working on the bachelor's in media communications. Um, I work for JCB North America. We're the third largest construction equipment manufacturer in the world. I do communications and engagement with them. So really, I'm just going here just to kind of keep sharpening my tools. And um, if I learn something new, I learn something new. If not, it's kind of like I refresh myself on things I already do. Um, so what is it that you want to do? So you're working with, for somebody else right now. Do you want to branch out on your own? What, what, do you, what is your particular goal? Uh, I, already, I already freelance on the side. Um, what do you do on the side? Uh, social media and marketing for just uh, local companies here in Savannah. My biggest, uh, my biggest reason for like doing what I do with social media and all of like everything that kind of really encompasses social media. Because to me, social media is not just social media; it's literally everything. But uh, it's working with small businesses. So I'm in Savannah, Georgia. So I have probably five or six current clients underneath my belt. Everything from uh, some boutique stores to restaurants to uh, a couple, you know, other content creators. Um, and then I also make my own content. I run my own YouTube channel. Um, I'm obviously heavy on all the, all social medias because you have to be, if you want to be successful in one place, you just got to figure out where you want to funnel your, uh, you got to figure out where you want to funnel things to whatever is at the end of your funnel. Everything else is just a funnel to the, uh, to that. So it really just depends. Um, all right. So here, here are my, my two cents and take it for that. So, um, one, let me tell you that your story, uh, do you have any stories from the military criminal investigation stories that you can do? Uh, I mean, I, I, not, not legally, no. <laughs> well, what if you change the names? I mean, what if you change the plot just enough? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I probably could. It's just like some stuff. Like I don't, I like when I, when I got out of the army and uh, I kind of really try to put that stuff behind me because like that stuff, a lot of that stuff is like stuff you don't want to rethink about. So that's why I don't really like, I don't really base my in my my own personal content off of it because like stuff I don't want to talk about be like personal reasons and then obviously like legality reasons. Um, there's probably well, some stuff I could come up with. Look, I mean that that genre does does well. 
you know, yeah. first off, like, you know, police procedural, criminal investigation, those calib, you know, those books still do very well. I mean, truthfully, if you're going to be an, arth an author of any kind left in the world, and I don't even know who's reading anymore, but uh, like erotic uh, fiction, you know, romance and, and murder mysteries, those are like it. <laughs> so it's still this core, like, you know, we've really redeemed ourselves as a species because it's still like, you know, sex or violence. <laughs> But yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I, I, I think that's something you should think about if you actually want to pursue. And I don't know that you do. You sound like you've got a lot on your plate and social media seems to be your focus. But, you know, you've got a grab bag of stories, I'm presuming. So, yeah. and you, you know, you don't have to write those stories. But every author that writes in this genre, Carl Hyacin, Elmore Leonard, any of these guys like crime novelists, those stories all began from some court hearing somewhere, you know, Elmore Leonard is a good friend with a couple of judges down in South Florida. I mean, he, he gets these stories. They're real. He changes them just enough, you know, to be able to like make a career out of it. So yeah. that's just something to think about. All right, let's go over to the social side. So what Shane's doing here is smart because he's, you know, he's doing it. You know, he's actually putting it out there. How good is your track record for getting eyeballs on restaurants and boutique stores? Uh, the last big brand I worked for, my biggest, my biggest partner, uh, partner right now or client, uh, he's averaging around like 200,000, 300,000 views a month on his, because of on you? his channel. Yeah. Oh, no. But, well, you're, he is getting that. He's he's a social he's an influencer and he's getting no that. no 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 he he has a uh, tech product okay so he he has a product that's basically like an IMDb meets a Shazam for music so an IMDb also, meets a what like Shazam so okay okay yeah, yeah um restaurants probably like local restaurants probably doing like a hundred thousand hundred thousand views engagement impressions um throughout a month time but those so, are I mean, good numbers man those are great yeah. Um, so he, here's the catch. I mean, and everybody, in, I'm bringing that up because you weren't here last week, but everybody in this room wants to do social media, you know, has to do social media. I mean, whether they want to or not, they've got to do it. Now, some of them actually want to go be, you know, content creators of some kind and social media is going to be the platform to do it. But, um, you know, you're actually out there trying to get it done. The hard part is quitting your day job. Yeah, I uh, I mean, I definitely could. I could quit my day job. Um, like right now, as far as like what I be, what I pull from freelancing, but I want to be. Some of the times it's a three month contract. Some of it's a six month contract. So until I know that I'm steady, steady enough, uh, I mean, I'm gonna stick with my job because it's. I mean, I make good money there, and it's a great company, but. I could, I could probably walk away now and be okay. Um, but I don't want to just be okay. I want to make sure like, yeah, I'm going to, I want to triple what I, I want to triple what I make in my day job just off of freelance. When I get to that point and it's consistent for a year, then I'll re-circle back to see if I actually want to quit my day job. You know, the hard part is too that, and this, this goes for everybody that's looking to do this. Cause look, Shane's farther along, I think than most people in this room where he's actually getting clients and soliciting other people for work and then he has to deliver a set amount one it's hard because you know selling likes and things like that that's a tough business it's hard you know you, you it's it's takes a lot of work uh but the, the key here is that um the marketing side of all businesses is like the first thing to go so, you know, when it comes down to, I don't know who was around in like 2008, 2009 during the recession, but, uh, you know, people wouldn't advertise at all. Now, it's a little different with social media because Facebook's basically free, but the concepts are the same. You know, do I need to pay for the media marketing guy? Do I need to pay for the public relations person? Do I need to pay for, you know, the social media person that I'm paying to actually do the post? So these people tend to go away in bad economic conditions. And they're going to keep Gary, who's been at the front desk for 30 years, 
before they get rid, you know, before they get rid of him, you know, they're going to get rid of the social media people. So it, it, that's just the nature of the beast. So, it, you know, having something like Shane has where it's a stable job until he can build up, build up, build up, you know, it's smart. It's it's a wise choice because, you know, the economy is changing. Next year is going to be in flux a little bit. So who knows, right? Now, the media has also changed significantly where more and more people can even do it. So there's also tougher competition. So it's like the video production skills that I was talking about before in Premiere Pro and After Effects. My 12-year-old can do that. <laughs> so it's like the so now we have a different shift, you know. So it's not just maybe economic uncertainties, it's going to be a technological shift as well. And if Shane's getting paid, you know, just picking a number out of a hat, if each one of these clients is paying him 50 grand a year. And then they get some, you know, 20 year old kid that comes along and they're going to say, gosh, I could do this for 25. You know, so that's that makes it really hard. So I'm just giving you guys kind of the lay of the land as to if you go out. Get a dozen clients because you may lose six. Right. Um, Shane, any other thoughts that you have on any of that? Because everybody in this room is going to have to. Uh, kind of put their toe into the water that you you've already stirred up i guess uh i would say like just like an advice portion of just me start when i first started out kind of getting my own clients is like don't be afraid to do those cold emails those cold calls those cold dms i'm like whatever your whatever you're like selling or your niche is like don't be afraid of that because you're gonna i got hundreds of no's before i started getting my yeses um but just like consistency don't be afraid of those no's and like if you're in a local spot that's not big, don't focus on those big things that are already kind of established. Find those places that you know, like that hole in the wall place that's really, really good, that has a great story behind it, and then help take that story that's already built and pull that out to everybody else. Like, luckily for me, I live in a tourist destination, so it's a little bit easier in a sense of that selling point, but there's also a lot of competition, especially when it, when it comes to food. But I pick things that I love and I'm passionate about, and that's kind of how I've translated into how I pick my clients. Well, and, and the truth is, is that, look, you got to lay your seeds out and, you know, not everything's going to grow. And, but, you know, you get a couple restaurants and restaurants are usually where a lot of, you know, people start and that's fine. And they may be paying you literally in free lunches for a little while. So be it. I mean, the hope is, is that maybe there's an event at some big Savannah hotel and they're having, you know, a food event and, you know, you can go there and you can literally hobnob or the boss that you're working with is like, oh my God, this guy, Shane has been so great. He's boosted my, you know, my, my social media posts by this, this, and this, and then they start to sell you. So, actually, you know, that's that actually kind of how I got a lot, a lot of the more of my actually clients is they had like, we had a, it's actually a place like I walked to every probably like every Friday I go get lunch over there and I started working doing some stuff for them and then they had like a little local meet and greet with like chamber of commerce and then some other people like they were the lady was bragging about it and then she's like do you have business cards I was like no it's not 1999 anymore but yeah. here's my Instagram hey, I, still, I still have business cards no I got I got business cards it was just really good Oh, I know. I know. Hey, look, uh, this is good advice for everybody in this room. I mean, you got you because you're going to have to do this. And in some ways, if you're not making it off of your brand alone and and good luck, I mean, because that's 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 a hard path too. you may have to fall back on on these skills. One, you may have to go obviously work for somebody who's got health insurance and can pay you, you know, while you're off trying to explore some of these other arenas. But nine times out of 10, it's going to be word of mouth. It's just going to be word of mouth. I mean, your work can be good and then the word of mouth will come out. But, you know, and then your pricing too. Pricing is really going to be critical. And if Shane can come in and he can just suck up, I'll do, I'll, I'll work more, I'll work harder, I'll work cheaper, you know, he'll get them next year. He's just got to get them in the bag. So, you know, and if you can keep them in the room for, you know, on a, on a, on a monthly basis, then, then that's good. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, yep. Let's go to Maria real fast. Maria. Hello. Hello. How's, uh, how's things? How's uh, any trouble with writing? And we talked about your brand a little bit last week. Um, yeah. 
well, besides me not getting much sleep, it was just rough to finish that last couple assignments that I had that was supposed to be done on sun by Sunday. But yeah, your professor um, is a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but other than that, I mean, I think I just got stuck. Like I finished it finally today, the one point four, but I was kind of stuck on like the questions because I like you said you wrote your story multiple times. Like I started one years ago and I don't know, I've rewritten it like over more than once. So I was kind of playing it off by that, but I haven't gone through it in a really long time. So I was just a little bit stuck, but. Well, yeah. welcome, welcome to writing. I know, right? <laughs> You're so, challenging look, me and I like it. <laughs> don't take it personally. Like some people will, will, will take it personally. They're like, oh, I'm a failure. There's no inherent like writing gene. It's not like you're born with it. It's like, oh my God, I came out and here I am. I can just, you know, I'm told yeah. somebody, I can just write, you know, 10,000 words a day. It's, it's amazing. I mean, you know, it's work, it's work. And it's, right. it's gonna suck for a long time. And then you'll be like, I realize oh, I finally see the light. And I guess yeah, the more kids I had, the less time I have to sit down and just like really get in that zone of like writing and being creative in that area. So just yeah. laugh out some time in your day. And then what's mm -hmm. most important here is beyond the writing is that you're focusing on your brand. So that's what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. So everybody in this room hopefully is learning from everybody else. You know, I mean, like, you know, Scott's got a certain idea that he can go use. Brittany's got, you know, certain uh, ideas that she's got. Everybody should be honestly stealing from everybody else because mm -hmm. this is just one big knowledge pool. And what like Shane has been doing, man, everybody should be like, oh my God, I'm going to go do that in my town. I'm going to start writing emails to, you know, because the, the, it used to be if all the gatekeepers are gone, all the gatekeepers are basically gone. I mean, there's still like a Netflix and an Amazon, but the access points like for Hollywood are, are, are much different now, right? The mm -hmm. access points for publishing are, are, are way different. And social media, there's no gatekeepers at all. No. So what you guys have as a skill set for even like social media and the technology growing up in your hand, you probably have more like skills at your age than what I had when I was your age, because you know, you've grown up with the equipment literally in your hand. So you could go out and start soliciting people to do work for them because you probably have more skills than the you know 60 year old guy running the restaurant. So just something to consider. So yeah, I'm going to go over to Aaron, all right? He's, he's my, my, my last one, I think, right? Yeah. Aaron, welcome to class. How are you? Hey. All right, man. So real quick, tell us what you want to get out of LA Film School. What's your brand and what do you want to get? What do you want to do? Well, I was originally wanting to start with, I was wanting to do something on YouTube, mini documentary, something like that. Um, but recently, I've actually turned to writing. Um, I've just had some ideas that's come up, so I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I'm still at the beginning stages. I'm still learning. Um, but, I, I mean, I hope to have a YouTube channel maybe one day. All right, so look, here's here's where you need to start. Like, it, it's not a hope. It's a I will. Okay. It's not a I, I, I want to write. It's I will, you know. That's going to be the difference. Yeah. That's I'm, I'm I'm really bad with that. <laughs> you, just, you have got to build this content now. Yeah. And you've got to start practicing to get it out into the world. And just like I've told, you know, if you don't have the ability to, you know, edit video or shoot video or, you know, all of these skills are, are going to be paramount. You literally yeah. need to be a one stop shop for for you. And yeah. Your so if you write a book, that's great. But can you put together a you know a commercial on it? Yeah. Because you should be able to. Like, here's my book. Oh, and here's my commercial for my book. Yeah. You know, so you should be able to do all that because I don't know about you, but I mean, I, I, that costs money that I have to go pay somebody else. Yeah. And you know, I don't want to go do that. I want to be able to keep my money, and I'll just learn the skill. Yeah, exactly. So well, I want to do I mostly focus on video editing. Well then, can you can you edit? Yeah. Okay, good. So that's a good step. Um, Premiere Pro. Yeah. Okay, good. That's another good step, at least for the next couple of years. Of this yeah. Season. It's all Adobe. Um, I feel bad for the guys coming in on the final cut and they're like, <laughs> 50-50 shot and I blew it. 
Yeah. Um, all right. So look, you, you, you definitely start working on some of your video skills then, or start working, you know, let's build a YouTube channel with a brand identity. And if you're going to write fiction, that's going to be, that's going to be hard. Yeah. Because, you know, like Jess and what Patricia were talking about, they found this perfect little niche that fits well with like a nonfiction kind of realm, right? Yeah. Um, and that's good because, you know, let, let's face it. I mean, plus size women are no different than anybody else. Exactly. So basically every human experience, they could write as a book. I mean, it could be everything from, you know, uh, how to go get happiness to, you know, um, sleep apnea. It doesn't yeah. matter, right? They could still write it. So their content literally is endless. Fiction's a little different, right? Because all of a sudden you are the brand. So you've got to establish yourself in a way that it's like, okay, who's Aaron Maynard? Yeah. You better be somebody and you better be really good at writing and you better be getting yourself out there like crazy. Because now, I mean, it used to be 2012, 2013. That's when self-publishing like was really, really hot. Like you could get your book out there and you could make a lot of money. There was a couple of people, Hugh Howie, he wrote a book called Wool. It did really well. He bought a yacht, sailed the world for a couple of years. E.L. James, she did 50 Shades of Grey, made a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, Andy Weir, he wrote The Martian. These are all self-published people. And they've done very well for themselves. But in some ways, those days are gone. Yeah. So you better be somebody that's like, oh, my God, I got to stop what I'm doing in this yeah. sea of noise because Aaron is talking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that like, makes sense. That's hard, man. Yeah, it's that's very hard. hard. That's, so, that's finding something unique to put out there that somebody hasn't already done, too. It's well. You know, it, it's it is a catch-22 it's like well nobody's gonna know who i am until they read the book but nobody buy the book because they don't know who i am yeah um, you have to find like ideally there's a genre you know there's book review podcasts and book review youtube channels and things like that so if you read a lot um you know there's niches I mean, you know, there was a guy that I had in one of the last classes that was doing like a, a fan fiction kind of version of Dungeons and Dragons. So he's got a little niche, but he'd had a, he had his own Dungeons and Dragons like following on YouTube. So I'm like, well, the book fits well there, yeah. right? So he's already got a built in audience, but it's, you know, it's in that realm, so to speak. Um, here, here's what I'm going to say about writing. And I know this firsthand because I've written a lot of books. It's a really hard market right now. Um, you go to, an, go, go to a place where people are sitting and waiting, okay? okay? Doctor's offices, airports, train stations, and look around. When I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, everybody would be reading a book. You know, you bring a book to the airport. Yeah. You, bring a book for the plane. you buy a book at the airport. Nobody, it's all this all the time. Swipe, swipe, or whatever. Yeah. Or technology. <laughs> One direction or the other. So, I, yeah. I can remember fifth grade, a uh, author actually came into my uh, classroom and showed us, like, I guess on the back of books that has addresses to publishing companies. Yep. And I, like, I would try to do that when I was a child. But, well, you don't have to ask permission anymore. And the publishing companies are they don't you know, do that. merging and dying. And, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, you can go that route. But a lot of people don't know that, like, you're, if you go to a publishing house and you let's say you get an agent and you're able to, you know, you write a query letter and they're like, oh, my God, I got to publish Aaron Maynard's book. Yeah. Um, you'll be lucky to get $10,000. Yeah. Now you earn money after, so they'll give you a check basically for 10 grand and they'll say, here you go. And you'll get some royalty money after, you know, we sell that $10,000 worth of books. Yeah, and the yeah. truth is most first time authors don't cover the $10,000 and the publishing house is literally out that money that they gave. You don't have to pay them back or anything, but it's like $10,000. It's like Vegas. They're they're gambling 10 grand on you that your book is going to sell. Yeah. 
And most most first time authors don't even cover 10 grand. I mean, and 10 grand is not, you know, you're not living off 10 grand. No, not at all. So, you know, it's uh it's a different beast. So that's what I'm telling you. You gotta have, you know, you can you can bake up for it in quantity and you still have to have quality. But if yeah. you're suddenly if you have a series of books and you got 25, so if Jess and Patricia do a series of nonfiction books along with their podcast and their YouTube channel and everything else, and they've got 12 self-help books for plus size women. That's pretty okay. good. Yeah. Right. You're building you're yeah. building an industry. I see what you're talking about. So um here, here's what I, I encourage everybody to do. Um you and I said this last week, and uh I, I think it's really important. I would look to each one of you to have a certain set of social media skills when you come out of this school. Okay. I I, I would expect you to have video production skills, which means you can shoot and edit, you know, your own stuff. Yeah. I would expect you to be able to build websites. I would expect you to be able to post, you know, everywhere to be able to get me some, some type of eyeballs. And I will go to your, like for Shane, you know, I will go to his clients and I will look and see. And, and that's how you will be judged in this new world. And that's, that's, that's good because, you know, it's, it's, it does come down to like what you can produce, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the number of people you can kind of get, but it ain't easy, man. I mean, it, it's really, really hard. So um, I, 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 you have to practice now. You've got to like establish your brand because why would I go to any one of you from, let's say I own a restaurant. Why would I go to any one of you if I go to your Facebook page and you like have 12 likes, you know, or 12 followers, that's like, yeah, you know, you're not building up yourself. Why would you build up my Italian restaurant? Yeah. You know, so you've got to start building this self identity and self, you know, this brand now, because when it comes time to get a job, if you do what Shane is doing, or you're, you know, you're going to go do it for yourself. You got to get eyes. Yeah. Got to get something going. So. All right, let's do a quick, uh, anybody have any other like problems with the week, problems with the material, anything? Um, all right, so I, I know this is like a story class and we, I, I just, I'm gonna, <laughs> story is the basic, basis of all things, okay? LA Film School included. Every class that you take is going to be rooted in story. So I do encourage you to kind of have this understanding of, you know, the basics of story, particularly a hook. So, and the log line and the hook are more or less the same concept. But the idea here is that you can think quickly and succinctly about that idea. That's going to be really, really important as, you know, attention spans get shorter and shorter. So be able to tell a story quickly, be able to hook the audience immediately i mean it used to be that you know oh i'm gonna go into the movie theater and i bought my ticket and i'll sit down to this movie for 45 minutes maybe an hour and then i don't like it and i'll get up and leave those days are gone you know first off nobody's going to the movie theater second of all you know it's 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 six seconds on youtube at best you know before somebody has has you know switched their attention span so you the story is still king and you've got to be able to master that quick hook and it literally is a hook. You're literally just grabbing them and grabbing them any way that you can, you know, right away, almost immediately. So just think about those kinds of like storytelling practices. Um, I, I think that, you know, out of everybody here, you know, like Patricia and Jess, I think they're terrific. You know, they're going forward here with a plan. You know, I think that's awesome. Uh, I think Shane, when you've got your, your, you know, he's got his business model here. I, I encourage you guys to go check out his stuff. Look and see what he's doing because he's farther along of where honestly probably all of you should be down the road. Because if you're not doing it for somebody else, you're going to be doing it for yourself. And you know, so and you guys are in class together. So feel free to communicate with each other. And be like, dude, how did you get this? Or, you know, Patricia, how's the podcast going? Or, you know, Scott, what are you going to do with the photography? Or, you know, Brittany, how's this, how's this story that you're writing? So work together. So you're not like going to, 
not see each other. Well, you'll never see each other, but you know, you're you are going to be in classes together as you go through. So, all right. Any other questions? No, that's it. Rock and roll. All right, look, guys. Uh, Vonage is a great way to reach me if you need me. Um, I am available for one-on-ones. If anybody wants to really hyper focus on anything specific, just you know, reach out. Um, the you know, and, and that's for your brand or for your story for writing. Uh, this coming week, week three is journalism. So you know, good luck. Don't freak out. Uh, just just try to get used to standing in front of a camera. That's what we're trying to do, Scott. <laughs> so all right you guys have a good night if you need me just uh hit me up all right everybody have a good one i hope to see you guys next week all right bye bye bye, -bye.